I want to talk to you today about uh, my time at Marplatz and the last two years where um, my team and I have been getting better and better and faster and faster at the cycle called A-B testing. So um, Marplatz is a second-hand website. It's owned by eBay. It's a part of eBay Classifieds Group, and it's the biggest uh, second-hand website in the Netherlands. We have about more than 90% market penetration and about 1.7 million unique, uh, unique visitors a day. 1.7 million, sorry. <laughs> um, so I want to start with a little bit of full disclosure first. Uh, since the time that I submitted this talk, I'm actually not working at Marplatz anymore. I, so from the learnings that I got uh, working for this team and for, uh, from what we were doing, I started loving A-B testing so much that at some point I took a position as a strategy consultant and Optimizely, which is uh, the SaaS vendor of A-B testing software that Marplatz uses. So I'm still working pretty closely with Marplatz. Um, but just so you know, I didn't change this presentation at all. There's no like sale stuff. Uh, don't worry. Okay. Um, let's start. Basically, my story is about how we were able to get from this, which is our um, view item page, uh, very, very standard, so photos, item information, some advertising, uh, bids, and seller information. And we were able to get from this to this. It was an A-B experiment. And it was done in, with one person in two days, um, with all the current uh, functionality still existing on the page. So all these parts are still existing here, and the item page. Um, we were able to do this with no changes to front-end or back-end code whatsoever. And we even added a little bit about with the user suggestion, with suggestions based on user behavior in here, which is a feature we didn't have before, specifically that. So how are we able to do this? Um, I want to start talking about methodology. And if we talk about methodology, um, we are big believers in the Lean Startup. Maybe, but I don't want to talk about the whole thing, but Lean Startup in the context of A-B testing and, and data-driven software development and uh, product development. Um, this, this cycle of build, measure, learn, where you build a test, you measure the impact, you make a learning, you make an action out of it, but the important part is that you get a new idea, and then if you those tests feed into each other, then it becomes a loop. And the point is to get as fast and as efficient as possible in that loop, and that's what we were doing. So, this also points the case for A-B testing, where a lot of people, uh, what we call the old way of doing business, is uh, industry expert with very strong intuition and very good ideas. They kind of lead the product uh, or UX or any uh, aspect of your website. Whereas today, in this like, huge data uh, kind of era, we're saying, OK, we can utilize this data to really see what works and what doesn't. And that's what we were doing uh, for, two, for about these two years. So most of my talk today will be not about the methodology, but rather about our tool set, um, which is this. So optimize the bang in the middle. This is our main A-B testing tool. Google Analytics is our a a major analytics platform for all of uh, eBay Classifieds group. And Google BigQuery is the way that we were um, analyzing our information. And these two I'll speak a bit more about. So let's start with Optimizely. Um, does anybody here not know Optimizely? OK, in two words, um, Optimizely offers you a, a snippet that you can put on your page. Um, you can then um, design an experiment where with JavaScript, CSS, and HTML, you apply treatments and changes to this page. And after page load, Optimizely loads those changes. So whereas, whereas the user doesn't see the old version, but right away they see the new version of the test. And uh, they allow some uh, data analysis for your test and uh, more advanced features. Um, we have the Optimizely tag, Marplatz had the Optimizely tag on all major page types, which means we did experiments on all parts of the website. It was open for all teams to use. Op uh, Marplatz are very, very heavy uh, into encouraging their teams to use A-B testing. And because Marplatz is such a big website with so much traffic, we were able to test a lot, which is now working at Optimize. I see it's a prerogative only really, really big websites have. And you'll see examples of that a bit in the, uh, later on. So Google Analytics. Uh, I imagine everybody knows Google Analytics. An analytics pro platform is super important today for a website. You cannot run a website and not have an analytics platform. 
But the problem with those platforms is that the reporting is really lacking. Um, did anybody here uh, experience some frustration with the console of Google Analytics? Because I promise you that I've, I've, I've experienced a lot of it. And as a developer, I don't know if I mentioned it, but my background comes from development. Um, using something like BigQuery, so basically what we do is that we dump all the data from Google Analytics into BigQuery daily, and then we are able to analyze it with that. BigQuery is basically an SQL interface for Google Analytics. Very, very powerful, and uh, it, it's a bit of a learning curve, but uh, very, very doable. Next is the sandbox environment. So what is a sandbox environment? It's, uh, it kind of came to being by accident. A sandbox environment was uh, just a couple of clusters, uh, sorry, a couple of servers in a cluster, uh, separate from our production cluster, uh, that we used for, uh, for putting kind of like third-party uh, marketing code that we had to, so because we don't want to put it on our own uh, um, production clusters. And we started utilizing it for our purposes. Um, because like the point that we made for the marketing uh, usage of it, we can break it and it doesn't cause panic, which is great, uh, especially if you want to be bold with A-B testing and if you want to run fast. Also, it's not confined to the stack of the, of the company. So Marplatz mostly works with Scala and uh, with kind of a microservice uh, type of architecture. And with this architecture it's, uh, and a rigorous, very rigorous kind of like QA process, it's very difficult to run fast and to get your experiments out there. And when you're not confined to that stack, then um, it's actually much easier and much faster. And the last part is NPS. So in two words for anybody who doesn't know NPS, it's a quality metric. It's basically a user satisfaction metric where you suggest, uh, you propose to the users one of these, well, a question along the lines of one of these two. And you have a 10-point scale with which they can answer. Um, these are called promoters, these are detractors. Percentage promoters minus percentage of detractors means your net promoter score. Um, and this was one of the main um, KPIs of Marplatz alongside uh, revenue, of course. So what we were doing with, AB, with the NPS is that we were sending a quarterly survey to all of our users, and that mean, meant we have four data points a year for, N, for uh, NPS. And we found that that's not enough, especially not in the context of A-B testing or if you want to do rapid changing. Um, the point is that when a user gets this survey, they're already outside of the context of what they were doing in Marplatz, uh, and we found that we need to bridge that. And then we built um, a little service that all it does is just pops up this question. We narrow down the 10-point scale to a 5-point scale. And once you click on one of those, you have an open field, so you can uh, add some kind of a comment. And we connected that to Google Analytics with a custom variable. What that basically means is that um, Google Analytics knows if you are following a user's uh, flow on Google Analytics, then you can see that, OK, he got this, answer, this question. Did he answer it? What did he answer? And this is a more continuous way with way, way more data points. Um, so this is our, basically the tool set. So what do we do with this? Um, we started A-B testing. We A-B tested a lot, and we started running into problems. So I don't know some of these problems. I don't know if you encounter, but if, you are, if you're going from 0 to 1 in A-B testing, you might have not seen all of them. But if you're going from 1 to 2, then definitely you have. And I want to put uh, those solutions kind of in the context of problems that we saw and how did we overcome them with those solutions. Um, so let's start with uh, knowing up front what to measure. So that's a very, very uh, common one. So in Optimizely, often if you want to make an experiment, you, made, you make a goal. And the goal means, what am I tracking? So let's say I'm changing uh, some kind of element, then, and that element is supposed to create conversion on some other element, so I'm tracking that element. So how many people are converting? Is that giving me the actual uh, better uh, effect that I was looking for? And the next, oh, sorry. And Often what happens is that you don't really know what kind of effects a change might bring. So your um, measurement and your tracking should be more extensive than just the direct effect uh, of this change. And the next part is it might negatively affect other metrics that you are not even, uh, not even measuring on Google Analytics. Um, this is an easy one. So implementing complex tests takes very long. Um, I don't know how it is in your companies. Marplatz 
has a very rigorous pipeline with an integration environment where our uh, developers uh, commit code to, and then that goes in a deploy to a demo deployment for QA process. From there, it goes to a loader performance environment, and only then can it go to production. Uh, and in between all of those steps, there's a very rigorous QA um, process. So how do we overcome it? So, and the last part is people are afraid to break stuff. So you want to run fast, you want to get through the cycle as fast as possible, but your dev manager, he's been working his ass off to get a nice, repeatable, uh, sustainable kind of code environment. And sometimes going fast kind of goes against that. So how can the two play along? So let's uh, see how we can touch all of these separately. Um, also a little part, this is a bit more in the context of our process. OK, knowing up front what to measure. You don't. And so you need to measure as much as possible. So Marplatz, um, like all the eBay companies, have Google Analytics and implemented a very um, extensive Google Analytics coverage. So all of the major pages, all of the major events are being covered and are being tracked. Um, and then when you use Optimizely, we thought, OK, why do we need to, find, to start defining those trackings again? Like, it's a lot of work. Why can't we just use what we already have? And because Op Optimizely integrates with a lot of third-party kind of like uh, uh, software, then we were able, um, using a custom variable, where basically Optimizely tells Google Analytics, this is the point where the user entered the test and which variation of the test it is. Um, so that allows you to kind of like look through his experience back and forth. Um, Optimizely also offers some kind of, also offers tracking and data analysis, but because we already had the extensive integration with Google Analytics, the extensive coverage, then we found uh, that that was uh, easier for us. Now, other metrics is again, going back to NPS. NPS is not measured in Google Analytics, or was not. And we wanted to have that data point for our tests because does your test affect user satisfaction is a very basic question you should be asking yourself. And we did this. We did this uh, using also a custom variable. So again, if I'm going during uh, the experience in Google Analytics, I can see that, okay, here he got the question, here he was on the test, and uh, because we are measuring everything again, then it's easy to kind of follow and build a coherent story of the user's experience. Um, a little bit of... Um, uh, disclaimer here would be that NPS, as we found, is a very, very difficult metric to move, and it's a very volatile metric. So at the end, it was very hard for us to measure changes in NPS in kind of more short-lived tests. Um, I'm bringing this mostly as an example of if something doesn't live in your analytics environment, or if you're not tracking it, or you don't have tools today that allow you to track it, uh, you're developers. You can build those yourself. Those are not difficult. You don't need to always worry about scale and, and like, these are very simple. So um, the analysis part is also very interesting because this is, um, you don't really see it very well, but this is a typical kind of like BigQuery um, query that we do. And what I want to point you at is in here, the result is basically boiling down to you have two variations, the original, which is the normal variation of the website, and the, very, and the uh, change that we applied. And then we see how many people saw them, how many people actually did the, con the conversion we were looking for them to do. And that is the main, main, main like, focus of the, of the test. Later on, after you get these numbers, um, often you can be not sure of the result, often you can be uh, you can see a behavior that you have not expected, and then you can start uh, traveling back and forth in the experience and see. Um, so maybe he saw something before that affected that. Maybe something afterwards happened that you didn't expect. And that's the power of uh, using Google Analytics, because it tracks the whole experience of the users on your website. And the analysis itself. Um, Optimizely has in its stats engine a reporting tool, which is a bit like this, a results page. Um, but because we weren't using, we were using data that is not in Optimizely, then we just built this. This was built in Excel. So again, very simple. If you don't have analysis tools at your disposal, often with a little bit of reading online and some, well, even Excel magic, uh, you can have those at your disposal now. So talking about quick implementation of uh, tests. So this is, uh, like I said, um, you don't have to go 
through the whole process of your uh, of uh, QA and the pipeline, because optimizely you can either use an editor to put uh, code there, or you can push code using an API. So we found that to make uh, a, we can do a big difference because if you apply some JavaScript and CSS to a page, which I'll show you again later. Um, you can make actually UX changes, and it's important to say UX and not UI because these are more meaningful. It's not just changing colors of a button. You can go really deep if you understand your user behavior and your business. And the other side of that would be the sandbox environment. So um, if we look back at our uh, custom data set, you can just take a data set, run a spin off an uh, instance of MySQL put it there, write some PHP to, uh, to serve that, and that's it. If you do it in your own production code, then we need permission from our database team. We need to go again through the whole process. We need to have revisions on it. Um, and afterwards, if it's, it doesn't work and you need to remove it, then it's another process. And here it's very easy. And again, if something here breaks, it doesn't cause panic. Um, Let's put it into the context of an example. So going back to the view item page. So what we did is that we wanted to see um, if we do some kind of a big change. So often in A-B testing, it's, very, very good, it's a very good idea to test small things at a time, because if a big change causes some kind of effect, you don't know due to what that change was. But sometimes it's nice to do a big change just to throw a big rock in the pool and see if it, does, if it makes any waves, just to know if you're uh, going in the right direction. So this is one of those experiments. Um, as you can see, we, with CSS, with JavaScript, we just made this photo bigger, like a bit of a different widget. All this area moved below. Um, and here, we replaced it with more of a kind of YouTube-like exploration right pane. But we didn't have the uh, data for this. So we didn't have like uh, users who were in this category also went in this. So what did we do? We went to BigQuery, and we ran this query. So if you go to a certain category, how likely are you, or, or what category are you most likely to go to afterwards? And we took that mapping, we put it in the database on the cluster, put some uh, PHP code that gets the category, um, queries the Marplatz API, gets the actual ads with the photos and everything, and puts them on the page. Um, again, a few days effort, uh, a few even hours effort, because Again, you don't need to go through the, cost to, through the uh, very painful process. And if it doesn't work, or if this, in this page like, we don't want it anymore, then we just remove the service, and that's it. So, um, yes. And the last part, uh, being afraid to break stuff. So going fast and being a maverick is all cool, but companies have a hierarchy. People above are not always comfortable with the new uh, methodologies, and they want, to, they want you to ensure that the normal process of the business is not being hurt. So what we did, um, and you guys can take it in any way you want, just the optimizely snippet always sat behind a kill switch. And a kill switch is just a conditional statement which you can flip on and off using some kind of uh, property file. So that was pretty simple. But also because Markplatz, like I said, it has a, very, a lot, a lot, a lot of um, traffic, we were able to say, we're going to test on no more than 10% of the traffic. Sometimes it happens, but as a, as a general rule of thumb, so whatever we do with testing, no more than 10% of our users can be affected by it. And every company can find the, the number that they're comfortable with, um, but find that number and discuss it with your dev managers, discuss it with your management team. So to recap really quickly, if you are building tests, um, so doing it within your code, like I said, there's a lot of overhead to it. There are tools today we use Optimizely um, in order to push that code faster, just load it after page load. We were trying to throw as many users at it. It uses Akamai as a CDN behind it. We were not able to break it at Marplatz um, so far. And the sandbox environment just gives you that extra backend capability. So if you want to spin off a service really quickly, if you want to do some complex authentication uh, process with something. So those are things that you don't necessarily want in your front-end code. Those are things that make, uh, can make a page load be a bit uh, longer. Those are things like if you have a data set, you would rather serve it from a database and uh, spinning off a of MySQL and just writing some PHP or uh, Python to get it from the database is something that every developer can do in half an hour. Um, capturing the data, so capture as much as you can. 
Um, I kind of like to compare it to losing your sunglasses in, at sea. So like if you're at the beach and then your sunglasses fail, you're not just like going at one spot and grabbing it. You're feeling around, and this is what you should be doing with your data. You should be looking around. You should be seeing what can I do with it. Um, what other things that I, not, that I might have not thought of could be affected. Analysis, the same thing. Analyze in depth. Look forward and backwards in the experience of your users. Um, things that you might have thought are trivial um, effects of the changes that you do might be actually not that trivial and might have more ripples later on in the experience. And the last part, move fast, be a maverick, but do it in a controlled manner. Have the people above you be comfortable with it, and they will support you every step of the way. Now, before I'm done, uh, just two words. I have left Marplatz. Um, I'm still working with them. It was a great place to work. And if you find what I'm talking about today a bit interesting, then I encourage you to look at uh, some of the positions that are available at Marplatz. That's how I ended up in the Netherlands, and I've not regretted it since. Thank you very much. Questions? Are there any questions for Lev? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Everything's clear. No questions. Oh, there we go. I can just shout. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you say I'll repeat it. It's a very good question. That is the only slide that I have forgot, neglected to add to this, and I usually have it. Can you, um, can you to, repeat the yes. question? Yes. Um, so what he was asking is, uh, what kind of core co competencies do you need in order to be like an all-around good testing team? Um, and I recognize three. Um, you need to be a developer. You need to know for your front end. So sometimes back end, like I said, uh, we're spinning off like microservices in order to serve some stuff. But basically, front-end capabilities. The second part would be uh, analysis, data analysis, uh, which encompasses some querying, uh, some understanding of data structures, and some understanding of statistics, because eventually A-B testing is a statistical method of extrapolating a sample size into your whole population. And the third one is strategy capabilities. You need to understand good ideas. You need to understand process. You need to understand how to tie the idea of a previous test into a next test and then create a loop out of it. Because tests, more than 70% of them are going to fail. Fail in the sense of they're not going to bring you uplift. But they're not going to fail in the sense that they're not going to bring you knowledge. And learnings is A number one in a data-driven culture. So if your test didn't bring you the knowledge you wanted, you need to know how to ask yourself, so what can I learn from this test? So if users haven't been clicking this button, if I made it that much bigger, why? Maybe then they don't look at it. Or maybe the size of the button. So this is, there's a lot of things that you can start asking yourself. And it's a, obviously, it's a whole subject in its own. So did I uh, answer it? Cheers. Anyone else? There's a gentleman over there. So um, there is, um, optimizely, they have a sample size calculator. And it's, uh, it's, a, um, it's a matter of a few variables. One of the variables is how much traffic you have. And the other variable is how long do you want to run it. So if you have a test, and also what kind of baseline you're testing and what kind of improvement do you expect. So if your baseline is 50% and you're looking to see an improvement of 10%, then it's going to take you more users than an improvement that you expect of 30%. So I, I, I'm not expecting everybody to know the calculations behind it, but if you look for sample size calculator, there's a very simple explanation there where you can look forward and figure that out. For this, I, I, for this, I don't believe in rules of thumb. Some people will tell you, look for 100 conversions. Some people will tell you, look for 1,000 conversions. But a rule of thumb? is a very simple way to describe something that, in essence, is actually very complex. So, and this part of knowing, uh, understanding like what kind of time and what kind of traffic a test will test take, um, then I don't recommend to use rules of thumb for that. I recommend taking an hour of your time, dig deep into some blogs, 
uh, into some information that is out there, and by process of getting better at it by repetition, uh, you'll get there. So sorry that I can't give it to you, but I just, in that sense, I really don't believe in rules of thumb. <laughs>